What's going on everybody? My name is Carlton Hudson and in this video I'm going to be walking you through the different type of static routes. Now we're not going to be looking at how to configure them. We're going to save that for the next tutorial. But in this lesson I'm going to be talking to you about what are the different type of static routes. So the first thing we have to ask ourselves is what is a static route to begin with? This is a network entry that was manually added to the routing table on a router instead of being added dynamically. So we know that a router can learn about a route dynamically. This means he learns about the network through a routing protocol from another router. So like OSPF, EIGRP, for example. But when the router learns about the route manually, this is when he learns about the particular network because the network administrator manually configured it. And when he manually configures it, we call it a static route. Now, it's four types of static routes. We have a network route, we have a host route, we have a default route, and we have what's called a floating static route. And the goal of this video is to explain all four of them to you. First, starting with a network route. So a network route is an entry that's in the router's routing table that's going to allow a router to route traffic for an entire network. So I'm going to come over to my whiteboard, which I have here in paint. So you see we have two different networks. We have this network over here, 10.10.10.0/24 that's representing this segment between PC1, PC2, and router 1. Okay, this little line that you see right here, this just represents a switch. What you're going to notice is that they all have IP addresses from this range right here because they all have 10.10.10 in the first oct first three octets. Okay, then we have this last segment over here. 10.10.20.0/24. That's representing this segment between R2, PC3, PC4, and PC5. So everybody's going to have an IP address starting with 10.10.20. Now, if we want computer one, for example, to be able to talk to computer three, we know that PC1 is going to send the traffic up to router one. But router one needs to know about this network right here in order to route the traffic. So what we can do is we can come on to router one and manually add an entry for this network right here telling him to send the traffic over to router two. So now once we add this static route it's going to allow computer one and computer three to be able to talk to any computer that's on this network right here. So it doesn't matter if they're trying to talk to computer three, computer four, computer five, they're going to be able to talk to every single computer on this network. Okay, just like we're going to come on to router 2 and add a static entry for this network right here. Okay, that's going to allow all three of these computers to talk to any device that's on this network right here. So, when you add a static route and it's for a specific network, that is going to be a network entry. So, it's pretty much allowing computers to talk to anybody that's on that particular network. Okay, now the second type is going to be a host route. This is an entry that's going to allow the router to route traffic for a specific host. So we come back over to our diagram. There may be situations where we don't want to open up the entire 10.10.20.0/24 network to PC1 and PC2. So if we were to add a static route for the entire network for this right here. Let me make sure I got my brush. So if we would have added a static route on router one for this right here we're pretty much opening up the entire network to computer one and computer two. So then computer one can talk to anybody on this particular network and if we wanted to stop that we would have to put ACLs and filters in place. But if we only want PC1 and PC2 to talk to PC3 for example without having to put access control list in place we can configure a host route on router one saying hey router one if you're trying to reach this specific IP address right here go ahead and send it on over to router 2 so now router 1 is only going to know how to route traffic for PC 3 he's not going to know how to route traffic for PC 4 or PC 5 so when router 1 or computer 1 sends the traffic up to router 1 as long as it's going to computer 3 router 1 is going to know to send the traffic right on over to router 2 but if PC 1 is trying to send traffic to PC 4 or PC 5 router 1 is going to drop it so 
this is what you can do when you don't necessarily want to open up communication to an entire network you only want to allow communication to specific hosts so instead of putting a static route entry for the entire network just put a static entry for the specific host so that way you only allow routing to that specific host and you don't open it up to the entire network okay so that's going to be a host route and then we have a third type which is a default route okay this is an entry that allows the router to send traffic to another router in the event that the router doesn't have an entry for the destination so we come back to our diagram let's just say that PC1 is trying to talk to PC3 and he sends the traffic to router 1 who is his gateway now if router 1 does a route lookup and he does not have an entry for the network that these computers belong to or he doesn't have an entry for PC3 as a host route we know he's going to drop the traffic but we can configure a default route that tells router 1 instead of dropping the traffic if you don't know about the destination send the traffic to router 2 now hopefully router 2 knows about the destination and he can send it where it needs to get to but instead of having router 1 drop the traffic we can configure him with a default route so once we do that router 1 for anything he doesn't know about he's going to send to router 2 okay that way he doesn't just outright drop the traffic just because he doesn't know where to send it so that's what a default route does instead of you dropping the traffic I want you to send it to another router who probably knows how to get to the destination okay that's going to be a default route and then the fourth type of static route come back to my slides the fourth type of static route is going to be a floating static route so what happens is you configure two static route entries on the router but you have the router prefer one of the static routes and the second static route acts as a backup so it's kind of just floating there waiting to be used now how it works is the primary static route gets installed into the routing table that's the one the router is going to be using to reach a particular network but if for some reason the primary static route cannot be used he will delete it out of the routing table and he will install the backup static route so the one that's kind of floating just sitting there and if at any time the primary static route becomes usable again you delete the secondary static route out of the table and you put the primary back in so coming back to our diagram what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a second link between router 1 and router 2 so the red link is going to represent a serial link and then the black link is going to represent a gig link so what we can do is we're going to configure two static routes on router 2 in order to reach this network right here and we're going to configure two static routes on router 1 to reach this network right here but when we configure the static routes we want the routers to prefer the gig link and only prefer the serial link so what we would do is when we configure the static route going over the gig link we're going to give it a lower AD than the static route going over the serial link so when you configure the static routes if you don't do anything else like change the administrative distance of the static route every static route is going to have an administrative distance of one so when you configure both static routes if you don't do anything else router one will see two equal cost paths to get to this network right here and he's going to install the static route going over the gig link and the serial link in the routing table he's just going to load balance between the two but if you want to only install the static route going over the gig link and then the serial link should only be used if the gig link fails what you need to do is configure the static route going over the gig link with a lower AD so let him have the default AD of 1 and you give the static route going over the serial link an AD of 2 so now the router is saying well this static route has an AD of 1 this one has an AD of 2 I'm going to prefer the one with an AD of 1 because it's lower so the only static route that gets installed in the routing table is the one going over the gig link the one going over the serial link is just kind of sitting there waiting to be used if needed so if in the event the gig link goes down or for some reason router one can't use the, the static route going over the gig link what he would do is delete it out of the routing table and he would install the static route going over the serial link and then once the static route over the gig link becomes available again you delete the static route over the serial link and you reinstall the one going over the gig link so that's what a floating static route is you have your primary 
which we said is the gig link and then you have your standby okay this is the one that's floating I'm just gonna put floating right here it's just kinda sitting there and this is the one going over the serial link so we're gonna give this static route an AD of 1 and then this static route an AD of 2 so the router is going to install this one and he's going to use this one to send any traffic he needs to send over to router 2 for this network but if for some reason he can no longer use the primary static route he will remove it out of the table and he will install the backup static route consider it is usable and then once the primary static route becomes usable again he deletes the standby static route and he puts the primary static route back into the routing table and guys that is going to conclude this video so all I wanted to do in this video was break down the four type of static routes a network route a host route a default route and a floating static route and in the next video I'm going to show you how to configure all of these so be sure to tune in for that video